Okay, so to be successful in math, you absolutely need to have the right math habits. And uh, one of the most important habits that you can have is to show all your work or to write out the solution to a problem step by step. And that's what we're going to be focusing on in this particular video. We're going to look at all the precise steps to solve this equation right here. So what we have is 4 times x plus 5. This is equal to 2 times 3x minus 7. Of course, the object here is to solve this equation for x. So if you know how to do this, well, go ahead and solve this equation and put your answer into the comment section. But really what I'm most interested in, even if you get this right, is how you solve the problem. You know, what steps did you write out? Because this is critical. And if you're not kind of building these, uh, you know, good math habits, then you're going to have a tough time, especially as you progress into more advanced math. But uh, we're going to look at all of this in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so first things first, uh, we want to go ahead and just solve this equation. Now, some of you are going to solve this equation uh, correctly. Others of you are not going to solve this uh, correctly, and that's okay. Uh, but here's the thing. If you don't get this right, you want to understand what you don't uh, you know, get. And the only way to kind of decipher that is to write out this uh, problem or to your attempt at doing the problem step by step. So really, that is the whole purpose of this video. And, uh, you know, if you get the problem right and you didn't write out any steps, well, that's great. But that is not a good habit. But let's go ahead and take a look at the actual uh, solution to this equation. X is equal to 17. All right, so how did you do? Well, if you got this right, let's celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars. So you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in solving basic one variable linear equations that involve the distributive property. And if you tell that to your friends and family, they'll be like, that is so boring. Leave me alone. I want to watch my Netflix. But anyways, all jokes aside, if you got this right, that is very good. But uh, a lot of you, again, um, have, you know, the right answer. But there is a kind of a big difference here. Some of you, uh, you know, solve this problem, you know, in a more precise, you know, way, i.e., where if a teacher was looking at your work, they was like, wow, this person, you know, showing out these steps nice and neat, they'll be able to one day handle things like calculus and uh, trigonometry and whatnot. And if you were like, you know, here's a step, here's a step, and here's a step, here's the right answer, because this problem is not that difficult, well, use this, um, you know, video or use the kind of feedback I'm going to give you. And of course, I can't see your work, but use this feedback to improve, right? So that's the whole kind of main idea of this uh, video. And if you don't, you know, if you didn't get this right, well, I'll give you some suggestions on how you can learn how to solve algebraic equations. But uh, let's go ahead and get into this right now. And first of all, we need to just kind of think about some big picture stuff when we're talking about solving uh, linear equations. Now, in algebra, there's all different types of equations. You just don't say, hey, you know what? Uh, can you teach me how to solve equations? Yes, fine. What type of equations? Well, we have things called linear equations, and that's what we're dealing with here. We have systems of equations, totally different than this. Uh, we have quadratic equations, totally different than all of these. We have radical equations, rational equations, and you get into more uh, advanced math, you have exponential equations, logarithmic equations, and this is, this kind of goes on and on and on and on and on. And um, each one of these different types of equations requires its kind of own skill set and understanding. So you just don't learn how to solve equations per se. You learn how to solve a set of equations. And uh, the way you get really strong at solving a variety of different type of equations in algebra is to build the right habits. And hopefully this is stuff that you were practicing way back in your primary and elementary school days. But if you uh, recall, I'm pretty sure some of your teachers out there were saying, hey, uh, 
uh, you know, write your workout better. Don't be so sloppy, you know, and I was terrible. I had total chicken scratch way back in the good old days. And I can remember way back even like the 1970s, my teachers yelling at me. Uh, well, I don't know if they yelled at me, but uh, they could have been yelling at me. They said, hey, be neat. You know, you're too sloppy. I don't understand what you're doing. And so you have to do this. Oh, you have to hear this over and over and over again. So if you continue to just work poorly and poorly means sloppy, not showing all your work, all you're doing is instilling, uh, kind of train yourself to, uh, you know, have these bad habits. And that is, you know, not a good thing. If you truly want to learn math and improve in math, you have to work towards better math habits and neatness and structure and showing your work step by step by step. You know, there's really no substitute around it. So anyways, that is the whole spirit of this video. But uh, let's get into the specifics of solving a linear equation like this. Now, in general, what we want to do here is get all our variable terms, okay, things like uh, that involve x is like say 2x or whatnot, all of our variable stuff over on the left hand side and all of our numbers on the right hand side. Okay, so if we have numbers like 10 or whatnot, uh, we want to get all that stuff moved over to the right hand side and all variable terms over to the left hand side. So that's kind of the big picture um, in terms of uh, the organization of the equation. Okay, we want to move any variable terms that are on the right hand side to the left and any numbers that are on the left hand side. Uh, to the right hand side. We, so we want to be thinking in those terms and then eventually we'll be able to solve a nice lovely basic one step uh, equation. So uh, when we look at this equation, we're like, all right, we got all this stuff to do, but we can't do anything yet until we take care of something uh, called the distributive property. So anytime you see something with parentheses, like let's say six parentheses y plus nine, can't do anything until you apply the distributive property. In other words, we can't shuffle variable terms to the left or numbers to the right until we take care of uh, these situations. So not all equations will have parentheses or distributive property situation, but when you do have a distributive property situation, you always want to handle those uh, things first. So we have an opportunity to apply the distributive property both on left hand, right hand side. So that's what we're going to do first. I'm going to kind of give you the general uh, process that we're going to follow. So we're going to apply the distributive property. And once that's done, we're going to start moving the numbers over to the right and the variables over to the left. And you can just kind of, um, you know, uh, focus on the variables first, the numbers second, numbers first. It doesn't make a difference as long as you get all those variables over to the left and all those numbers over to the right. Again, uh, you know, this is, an, uh, by the way, not an absolute thing. You could have your numbers to the left and your variables to the right, but typically we don't, uh, you know, see equations written that way. So, for example, we have like 2y is equal to 8. This is the way we would write it with the variable on the left. We typically don't like to write that equation as 8 is equal to 2y, although there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, so hopefully you're kind of getting the big picture idea and you're saying, yes, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I see what you're talking about. And that is fantastic. All right, so I kind of gave you a, a general overview of what we're going to be doing. Now it's up to you, if you haven't tried this prompt, to write out the description of what I just told you to do step by step by step. And typically, when you solve linear equations like this, your work should kind of look like an ice cream cone. So in other words, you're whittling it down like so. So eventually you're going to get your final answer. Okay. And you're just showing uh, each step. Okay. And just take one step at a time. And when you write a step, you kind of audit. In other words, write this step and be like, all right, did I take the right step? Double check, kind of grade yourself. Like, all right, this looks good. Check. And then you just kind of take another step and then double check yourself and then check again. You're kind of auditing as you're going. All right, so kind of front loading this video in terms of the lessons learned or the habits that you want to have in order to solve an equation like this. Now let's go ahead and actually do this. Okay, so again, there's gonna be some steps in here like the distributive property. If you need help on any of the algebra or if you need to practice 
uh, how to solve linear equations, I'm going to um, refer you to my algebra courses and my uh, pre-algebra, algebra 1, algebra 2, whatever level you're in. You can find links to those courses in the description, and I will give you full and complete uh, instruction on all this stuff. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and get into this problem right now. So again, we have a distributive property situation on the left and a distributive property situation on the right. That is a number outside of a parenthesis where there is a sum or a difference. So we need to apply the distributive property. So what we're going to do here is take this 4 and multiply it by x. So we're going to distribute okay, uh, the 4 to the x. So 4 times x is 4x. And then we're going to distribute this 4 to that 5. So 4 times 5 is 20. Okay, now on the right-hand side of the equation, we have the same situation. So we're going to distribute this 2 to the 3x. So 2 times 3x is 6x. And 2 times this negative 7 is negative 14. All right, so this should be the first step that you write uh, just like this. Okay, now I'm not going to have, I'm going to break this um, equation down into very specific steps, but um, you know, you would see my next step here, my next step here, et cetera, et cetera. But I kind of want to focus in on each individual step. All right, so this is the first thing. And when you um, take this step, you should be like, all right, well, I have 4x plus 20 equals 6x minus 14. Did I do this right? Well, then just kind of look at it, you know, kind of, um, you know, inspect your work and you say, all right, this looks good. Now you can have the confidence to move on to the next step. All right, so what is the next step? Well, if you notice here, we have a variable term 4x. It's on the left-hand side, so it's in the right place, but this 6x is a variable term. Remember, we want to get these over to the left-hand side, so we're going to have to scoot this variable term over here, and we have a number on the left-hand side. We want to, Remember, we want to get all of our numbers to the right, so we're going to have to move the, that uh, 20 over to the right-hand side. So these are the two steps that we have to take before we can finally, finally solve this equation. And it doesn't make a difference whether you move the variable first or the number uh, first. Uh, it'll work out the same way. But uh, in this case, I am going to move the 6x over to the left-hand side. All right, so again, we have a variable term. We want to get all those variables to the left-hand side. So I want to link it up with this 4x. And in order to do that, we need to follow the golden rule of algebra. And that is whatever I do to one side of the equation, as long as I do it to the other side, it's perfectly okay. So if I want to get rid of a 6x, I'm like, hey, Mr. 6x, uh, you need to get away. Uh, you need to get, you're off like off sides, right? Like a football uh, game. And you're on the wrong side of the line here. Uh, I need to get rid of you on this side. So how can I get rid of a a positive 6x over here, easy. I'll just can subtract a 6x away from it. And I'll be like, okay, 6x, I'm going to subtract 6x to get rid of it over here. But if I do that, I have to do the same thing to the other side. Okay, so that's really what we're doing. And uh, the format that you want to use, and there's a couple different formats you want to use. I've been doing this a long, 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 long time. Use this format. Okay, so in other words, you want to write your stuff in columns. Okay, so we're going to move that 6 over to the left-hand side, so we're going to subtract 6x from both sides of the equation. And notice I'm going to um, line up this 6x with this 4x because we're going to be subtracting two variable terms. I'm going to put a line just like this. Now I'm going to add down in a column manner. Okay, so positive 4x minus 6x. 4 minus 6 is negative 2, so that's negative 2x. Positive 20 plus nothing is a positive 20. Po uh, 6x minus 6x is 0. I don't need to write that. And then negative 14 plus 0 is negative 14. All right, so this is the result of taking um, this step by subtracting 6x from both sides. And you want to just double check your work. All right, like, you know, look down at each column and say, okay, uh, did I do this right? Well, 4 minus 6x is negative 2x. Uh, plus 20, plus 20, equal, there's nothing here, boom. Now, uh, you know, when you get better at this, you're not going to have this negative 14 uh, way over there. You'll have it kind of uh, tucked in right there, but no big deal. I'm kind of breaking this out nice and uh, easy for those of you that, uh, you know, may have been 
away from solving equations uh, for some time. And now, what do we have? Well, we have all our variable terms over to the left, so that's good. But we now have to get all our numbers o uh, over to the right-hand side. So now we're going to have to deal with that positive 20, and we're going to deal with that the same way uh, we dealt with moving the variable. Okay, so the 20 is on the wrong uh, side of the equation. So if I want to get rid of a positive 20 over here, I could just subtract 20 on this side, but I also got to subtract 20 on that side. But we want to uh, make this look nice and neat. And of course, I'll show you that after I show you this, and that is a uh, invitation to subscribe to my channel. Now, um, I need your support, right? I'm not afraid to ask, and you shouldn't be afraid to ask for math help. If you're like, hey, I'm struggling in math, the worst thing you could do is try to you know, figure everything out on your own. For me, I'm like, well, I need to figure out how to grow my YouTube channel to reach as many people as I possibly can because I love teaching math. So I, you know, I'm definitely not shy to ask for help. And by asking you to subscribe, it's like, hey, I need your help uh, because my goal uh, is to teach math. Okay, and the bigger my classroom is, uh, classroom is, i.e., the more people I'm helping, the happier I am. So every 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 single time I post a YouTube video. Having people subscribe um, really does help me out. So certainly appreciate that. And if you're going to do that, you might as well hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. If you're new to my channel, I post videos from basic math to advanced math like calculus and everything in between. But uh, really, I try to make math, uh, you know, not so boring for those of you that don't like math. And I try to teach it in a clear and understandable way. So... Uh, hopefully, uh, you'll already have, uh, you know, subscribed to my channel and hit that notification bell button because that's all I needed to have happen to finish this problem up. All right, so let's get back to this. So we have negative 2x plus 20 is equal to negative 14. Now, remember, uh, we're kind of scanning and we're kind of thinking big picture. All right, do I have all my variables to the left? Yep, that looks good. Do I have all my numbers to the right? No, I have... This positive 20 here, so we need to uh, scoot that over to the other side by subtracting a 20 away from this 20. But if I got if I'm gonna do that, I have to do it to both sides of the equation. All right. So just so to kind of reinforce that concept, if I have a basic equation x is equal to five, okay, uh, you want to always think of that equal sign as kind of a balance scale, a teeter totter, a seesaw, whatever <laughs> you for, uh, refer to. In other words. This is e almost like equal in weight as this side. So if this is five pounds and this is five pounds and this is in balance, well, everything is perfectly nice and in balance. Uh, you know, everything's happy here. Now, if I add one over here, I just made the right-hand side kind of heavier than the left-hand side, right? So now I have X is equal to six. And if X is the same thing as five, well, this is out of kilter, but I can fix that by adding a one over here. Now I have one plus X is equal to six. And what you're doing when you're solving an equation, a linear, a linear equation, is you're kind of just reverse engineering, kind of stripping away um, you know, all the numbers and variable terms on the left and right hand side. So you can get down to whatever that X is equal to, which is the solution. And I'm actually going to uh, show you how to check the solution to this equation as well. But let's go ahead and continue this process. But, you know, as we do this, I want you to kind of reinforce these big picture algebra concepts, right? In other words, whatever you do to one side of the equation, you can do to the other. So now let's go ahead and write it in this particular format and add down in a column manner. All right, so negative 2x plus nothing is negative 2x. Now, I'm going to put that negative 2x in right here because I know I'm going to get a zero right here. So there's no need to kind of uh, have a space written there as a zero. So you're not going to have your negative 2x here. So uh, positive 20 minus 20 is zero. So we don't need to write that. Negative 14 plus negative 20 is negative 34. Okay, so at this point, we're down to a one-step equation. In other words, uh, we only have to take one step to solve for x, and that is to divide both sides of the equation by negative 2. Now, if you don't know how to solve uh, basic uh, one and two-step linear equations, again, that's no big deal. You know, At least you know your starting point. So uh, for those of you that want to learn this, uh, this is stuff that you would find in like my pre-algebra course or like my math skills rebuilder course if you're not if you're not a math student, right? But this is you know pretty much basic uh, pre-algebra. Uh, of course, you could be learning this in algebra one as well. But to solve for x, what we want to do here is divide 
both sides of the equation by negative 2. Again, remember, um, the key here is whatever we do to one side, we have to do it equally to the other side. All right, so negative 2 divided by negative 2 is what? That is a positive 1. Now, we don't write a positive 1, uh, but there is a positive 1 here in front of this x. So that's positive 1x or x, okay? x is the same thing as positive 1x. And, uh, of course, on this side, we have a negative divided by negative, which is positive. So negative 34 divided by negative 2 is a positive 17, and x is equal to 17. Now, let's suppose we're like, boy, you know, that guy on YouTube, he really taught me how to solve these equations. I'm feeling pretty happy that I did this right. Matter of fact, I'm going to turn in my paper so I can get my A-plus from my teacher. Well, don't do that yet, especially if you have, like, say, uh, two minutes or a minute or two left on your exam. Because what can you do? Well, you can check your work. So if x is equal to 17, if x is the solution to this equation, well, what that means is we can plug that 17 back in to where these x's were in our original equation. So we'll replace the, uh, each of these x's here with 17. And then we're going to work out the math. And if the left-hand side equals the right-hand side, well, in fact, that was the correct solution. So this is how you can check to see if you have the right answer. Okay, so everywhere we see an x, we're going to plug in a 17, and then we're just going to do some number crunching here. All right, so for parentheses, 17 plus 5, again, order of operations got to do what's inside the parentheses. So 17 plus 5 will be 22. So this is going to be 4 times 22. But let's go ahead and work a little bit on this side. So 3 times 17 is 51 minus 7. Okay, over here, we're working inside the parentheses. So 51 minus 7 is uh, 44. So here, we have 2 times 44, and here we have 4 times 22. And when you multiply 4 times 22, you get 88. And when you multiply 2 times 44, you get 88. So the left is equal to the right. Well, that is what we call verifying a solution to an equation, another very important math skill that you, uh, you know, need to know. Now, you're not going to be able to do this stuff, again, if you don't show these steps and if you're not neat and organized. And I know it's difficult, especially if you've been sloppy for a long time. I get it. I was sloppy for a long, long time. And it's just, you know, through a lot of pain. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, finally I just realized, that, listen, if I'm going to be successful in math, I have to start changing these habits. I have to start showing my work and uh, start thinking in terms of an audience, namely a math teacher looking at your work, right? So if you're a student, this is absolutely a must know. And even if you're not a student, again, the way, uh, you know, you write math, math is a language, the way you write it, imagine trying to tell a story and let's say you want to write a nice fictional story or whatever the case is, and you're all sleep, uh, sloppy and disorganized. Like, hey, here's my story. Guess what? Not many people are going to understand what you're saying. Math is a language, okay? You are telling the story of how the problem was solved. Okay, so hopefully all of this, uh, you know, finds you well, and you're saying, you know, Mr. YouTube Math Man, you raise a good point with me. I am going to work on getting neater, and that is fantastic. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.